सुप्रभातम बिफोर मार्वल एंड बिफोर डीसी देर वॉज योगा दट्स वॉट वी चैंपियन टू डाइन दिन एंड विभूति पाला थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ योग सूत्र द चैप्टर ऑफ सुपर पावर्स The chapter is very attractive. Obviously, Patanjali lists around in that chapter. He lists around twenty-five superpowers. In fact, even in other chapters, there is a mention of superpowers. Even in second chapter, there is a mention of it. Certain superpowers, but third chapter is dedicated for it. Out of those twenty-five which he lists in the third chapter, we can make three broad divisions, three types of superpowers. Broad divisions. Certain powers give you the ability to have exceptional control over your own body mind. For example, uh, some of the sutras were with animadi pradubhava. Animadi pradubhava means there are eight siddhis through which you gain so much mastery over your body, material body, that you can make it very light, very heavy, very big, very small, or the closest things, or you can levitate, or you can. Uh, Overcome hunger and thirst. So control over body and mind. One category of powers. The second category of powers deal with extraordinary knowledge, extraordinary perception, purva purva jati jnanam, parachit jnanam, kaya yoga jnanam. Purva jati jnanam means knowledge of your previous lives. Arachit Jnana means knowledge of others' minds, just by looking at them. Kaya Yoga Jnana means knowledge of your entire physiology, etc., etc. Exceptional knowledge or perception. This is second category of powers. Third category of powers, a little more enticing ones, are control over. external matter mind over matter the ability to control the world around you as you want it there are many powers listed under that category actually around 15 16 out of that category that you will be just like when you are dreaming when you realize that you are dreaming you you can begin to control the dream as you want just like that you can have control over the elements Five elements. Have you watched uh, the cartoon show Avatar: The Last Airbender? Yes. Like that. You can bend the elements as you want them. You can do water bending, air bending, and fire bending, whatever. So broadly, three categories of powers will come to the yogi. By deeper states of samadhi. Now, when we speak of these siddhis, siddhis is the accomplishments, literally translated, or superpowers. These siddhis, <coughs> there are three schools of thought presently in the modern times across the globe. One school of thought is uh, in certain cultures. Only God is allowed to perform miracles, or somebody appointed by God is allowed to perform miracles. If anybody else performs, I mean, if uh, if an ordinary ordinary man performs a miracle, he should be either appointed by God, he should be lucky enough to be called a saint, or he will be called called as uh, Satan's agent and he will be burnt. He will be called a heretic. You know all this witch burning was going on in Europe. 
in the Middle Ages. So if something extra is done by a human being, something above the ordinary, they will be either called as somebody appointed by God or by Satan. Ordinary people, everybody cannot do it according to one school of thought, according to some cultures. Another school of thought which came along with the rise of science is that all such cities, all such superpowers are only fictional. They are against the law of nature. They deny all such superpowers. In spite of there being a lot of evidence for it, they still deny. The third school of thought, mostly in the Eastern cultures, since ancient times, is that anybody can acquire them if they are willing to go through the process within themselves. Anybody can acquire them. It is not the property of somebody appointed by God. Anybody willing to undergo a certain process, anybody willing to undergo the discipline of yoga, will acquire them, can acquire them. So these three schools of thought exist in the Eastern cultures predominantly in the third exists. That is why it was elaborated by Padanjali as Yoga Sutras. See, it is actually simpler to look at it that way. In modern India, this has somewhat gone away, unfortunately. It is, it is simpler to keep a uniform benchmark for everyone and call them as extraordinary yogis. When somebody does something extraordinary, instead of calling them God and sent by heaven, a VIP sent from heaven, instead of doing that, it is actually simpler to look at it, look at them as yogis who achieve something within themselves and therefore they acquired those powers. In, in, the, in the third chapter, there was one sutra which said, the final last city. It says Sarva Adhishta Tattva, Sarva Jnana Tattva. You can become all knowing and all powerful, which is actually actually the idea of God in most minds. So in Yoga Sutra it says if an individual is willing to undergo a certain process, they will get all omniscience and omnipotence. Anybody. It's not the not, it's not the property of any individual being. Anybody can get it if they are willing to undergo the process. So looking at that, taking that as a simpler benchmark, it is better to look at people who display such powers as yogis rather than gods, who acquired those powers out of their own effort. Not, if they were not given those powers by someone else. So it is actually simpler to look at it that way. In modern India it has somewhat gone away, unfortunately. It is easier to look at people like Shiva, Krishna, Anuman as people who achieve something within them, some stability of mind, some state of samadhi, and therefore they acquire those superpowers. Anuman is supposed to have had all these ascetics, making his body smaller, bigger, heavier, smaller, lighter, whatever. He had complete and mastery over his body. But it is not uh, it is not mandatory that all yogis should display superpowers. It is not mandatory. Some don't. Actually, many don't. Only some do. For some reasons, for some special reasons, only some do. For example, in Ramayana, Rama did not display any extraordinary superpowers. He was considered as an ordinary human being who was a great warrior. But his own devotee, Hanuman, had extraordinary powers. And Hanuman acted like a servant of Rama. Ram, it is an irony if you look at it. Rama did not display any superpowers. Hanuman had exceptional superpowers. But Hanuman obeyed Rama for... Rama didn't ask him for, to obey him or anything. But simply out of his own wish, he obeyed him. Because he saw that Rama was in a higher state than himself. But Rama did not display any superpowers. On the other hand, Krishna displayed all kinds of superpowers. Shiva, displayed, or Shiva also displayed all kinds of superpowers. Shiva is supposed to have even stopped time. He is called as Kalabhaira in one of his names. He had control over time itself. So some yogis do display superpowers, not all of them do. 
So the, we cannot consider Siddhis as a benchmark to measure the progress in yoga of someone else or yourself actually. They may not come necessarily to everybody and even if they come necessarily, people may not display it outside. So it is not a necessary benchmark to measure that he is a yogi, he is not a yogi. For example, in the Western culture, Jesus is supposed to have displayed some superpowers. He is supposed to have walked on water and displayed such extraordinary abilities. So some do, some do not. But what happened, what happened over a period of time is, these people who displayed these superpowers, these yogis, these some of these yogis who displayed these superpowers, were elevated to the level of God. It is not a problem actually, even if you elevate to the level of God, if you know exactly what you are doing. If you are using that word God in a proper way, there is no problem with that. But it becomes diluted and so many other things happen with it. And therefore, it is better to keep things simpler. Consider all of these people as yogis. For example, even Buddha had superpowers. He did not display them. There are certain stories in his life where his disciples, one of his disciples displays psychokinesis. Psychokinesis means the ability to move external objects just using your mind. Just move something with your mind. So one of his disciples displayed that psychokinesis abilities and after that Buddha made a new rule in his community, in his Sangha. Anybody who displays superpowers will be expelled from the Sangha. He did not promote it. Even he himself had it, but he never displayed any. In his own words, when he tells the story of his own previous lives, Buddha described many of his uh, previous lives through, through stories that are called as Jataka tales. In one of those stories, in one of his previous lives, he was called as Aushara Kumara. And in that life, he had displayed extraordinary abilities, powers. But he was not yet a truly enlightened being, he was stuck somewhere in between. And he had power of, for example, talking to birds, talking to animals, having telepathic abilities. He had certain powers in his previous lives. He had blossomed to a certain extent, not fully. And in that life of Siddhartha Gautama, he attained emancipation. He completed the journey. So even Buddha went through that journey, but in that particular life he did not display superpowers because that was not his role. Whereas Krishna displayed all, all sorts of superpowers because that was his role in that time. We don't know why some do, some don't, that is not our business anyway. So this, uh, our history and the details that we have, extraordinary or supernatural details that we have, it becomes easier to grasp them if you put them all of them in the same framework. If you use this chapter, Vibhutupa, the chapter of Yoga Sutras as a benchmark, and say that anybody who undergoes a certain process of samadhi within himself will acquire them, our whole life becomes simpler actually. Your all of your metaphysics becomes much simpler. In the modern times, I'll just make a mention of this for those who are interested. In the modern times, in the 2013 or 14, a book was published by a prominent uh, former physicist. He is no more a physicist. He works in all these psychic abilities. He research, he conducts research on all psychic abilities. Some of you might have heard about him. His name is Dean Radin. He published a book in 2013 called Supernormal. And he wrote parallels between what was listed in the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, the superpowers listed in the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, and some of the abilities which are being displayed by ordinary human beings accidentally. For example, around the world there are 2,500 cases now, recorded cases of reincarnation. Small children remembering their previous lives. For example, there are many articles you can look it up in PubMed yourself. For example, in the US itself, once in the 60s or 70s, when, if, when one father was changing the diaper of a child, one and a half year old child, the child says to the father, when you were kid, when, when you were small, I was changing your diaper like this. 
the father thought it was some joke, and later they started realizing that that kid was the father's father. The kid started telling all the things about the grandfather and grandmother, and later they didn't have it out because there was no other means the child could know this. So this reincarnation is actually not, it is no more uh, a fiction. There are 2,500 cases, solid cases recorded all around the globe, not just India. So, like this, this is one, like that. Scientific evidence says that all human beings have all those superpowers to some extent, but very, very, very faintly. Everybody has the ability of psychokinesis. There is scientific evidence for it. Everybody has the ability of psychokinesis, but it is very, very faint. It is not harnessed yet. If you can hone it yourself, if you can train yourself, it will boost up. So everybody has some telepathic abilities, everybody has certain precognition abilities, everybody has certain clairvoyance abilities, everybody has certain psychokinesis abilities. These are all modern words of the same superpowers. Clairvoyance means the ability to perceive things which are beyond your normal perception. For example, if you close your eyes and you are able to tell what is happening in China now, that's clairvoyance. Precognition means the ability to see before it happens. Such abilities. So there is solid scientific evidence which has gathered over a few decades now to show that there are certain very prominent case studies where they display it very explicitly, or even apart from singular, single case studies, they have shown that normal people like us who have not done any meditation, nothing, even in us, these powers are in a dormant state and they are functional even now very, very faintly. Well, partly one of the um, things psychokinesis was researched here also, you might have seen, they keep one device here called random event generator. So even uh, normal people are seen having these abilities at a subatomic level maybe. You, what we have seen is normal people, if they, are, if they concentrate well enough, they can control at a subatomic level. Subatomic particles, will, the behavior will change. So your abilities are not so much that you can move the table, but you can move an electron now, for now. <coughs> so psychokinesis exists, clear ones exist. All these powers exist in us, very faintly, in a seed form. So yoga just says if you do certain things within you, it will blossom. But after that, it will also give a warning. It says the purpose of yoga is not this. The purpose of yoga is not this. The yogic sadhana is not done to achieve powers. You are supposed to go beyond them. If you get stuck in them, you will not attain Kaivalya, the ultimate state of yoga. You will be stuck somewhere in between. You will be stuck in your own dream. See, the final goal is to go. The final goal is to transcend the dream, not get stuck in the dream and become a god in the dream itself. No, even if you become a god within your dream, you are still within the dream. You have to recognize that. So yoga says, even if you become an all-knowing god within your own dream, it is of no use ultimately. Eventually you have to go beyond that too. That one of the sutras says that in that chapter. So, you can take two things from this chapter. Because of, well, because of this Vibhuti Pada, third chapter of yoga, we can make the entire, entire history, entire lore simpler. We can call everybody as yogis who display powers. You don't have to bring in the concept of God at all, actually. The second thing that you can note here is the warning that that is not the final state. You have to go beyond that too.